Hello everybody, my name is Jay. I'm one of the expert IELTS teachers here at E2 Language. I'm gonna tell you a funny little story. I'm gonna give you like six really important tips. I'm gonna give you four at the start and two at the end, okay? So you might have to watch this right to the end. Okay, so imagine if you were like a really good English language teacher and you went and sat the IELTS, not only just an English language teacher, you were like an IELTS teacher. Then you went and took the IELTS and you got this back. And if you look really closely for writing, you got 7.5. Ah! This is what happened to me when I took the IELTS for the first time because I didn't understand how I was scored properly. So what we're going to do in this lesson is I'm going to show you and demonstrate to you and help you to visualize and understand how it is that you're scored and six critical things you need to keep in your mind on test day. And you shouldn't forget these six critical things on test day while you're writing your essay, okay? Cool, so the first four are, you are scored on topic that you write on topic. You are scored also on structure, that is the overall structure and at the paragraph level as well. Not only just at the paragraph level, but also at the sentence level. So like, imagine like micro, meso and macro structures. You're also scored on vocabulary and grammar, of course. Before we push on, if you're not yet a subscriber to this YouTube channel, which is fabulous, click that subscribe button if you will. Okay, so here we go. These are the, what are they called? The band descriptors. This is what the IELTS examiners are looking at while they're looking at your writing. They have like a few minutes to mark your writing and this is how they do it. So let's look at task response first or what I call topic. So imagine I'm the IELTS examiner and I'm looking at your writing. So I look more closely at this and I think, oh yeah, okay. In your essay, you addressed all parts of the task. Well done, that's really good. You also presented a clear position throughout the response. Very good, yep, okay, fantastic. And yeah, you presented and extended and supported your main ideas, but there was sort of a bit of a tendency to overgeneralize and it lacked a little bit of focus. So for that particular criterion for topic, I'm gonna give you a seven, okay? Cool, so far, so good, pretty straightforward. So you've gotten a seven for that one. And imagine I give you a seven for the rest of them as well. Structure, vocabulary, and grammar. So what's your score going to be for writing? Pretty straightforward. What we do if we're talking about something horizontal is we give you an average. So I'm gonna calculate the average here. The average of seven and seven and seven and seven divided by four is, well, anyway, whatever. Not very good at maths. You're gonna get a seven, easy. What happens though if you do this? You get a seven for topic, seven for structure, seven for vocabulary, and a six for grammar. Well, again, you're going to get the average. So it's going to be 27 divided by four. That is seven and seven and seven is 21. And then you got a six, so that's 27. We divide by the four criteria, you get 6.75. However, they do not round you up to seven. What they do is they round you down. So in fact, you're going to get 6.5 if this were to happen to you. Okay, fair enough. So far, so good. You're understanding what's going on with the criteria and the scoring. Just wait, it's gonna get a little bit more complex and interesting. Okay, let's look more closely. We've looked at the horizontal, what happens horizontally in your scoring. Let's look more deeply at this vertical scoring because for grammar, you're also scored from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So let's do a little scenario here. So let's say I'm the examiner, I'm looking at your essay and I've had a close look and you used a variety of complex structures, well done. And you produced frequent error-free sentences, hooray and you have good control of grammar and punctuation, but maybe you made a few errors. So I'm going to give you a seven for grammar. Let's make this story a little bit more interesting. Let's say you produced frequent error-free sentences, you've got good control of grammar and you made a few punctuation errors or something like that, but you only used a very limited range of structures with only rare use of subordinate clauses. What this means is that you didn't 
put into your essay, for example, very many complex sentences. That is, sentences that have a which or a that type clause or one of those interesting sentences that starts with an or though or an as or something like that. If you want to learn more about this, you can watch the, uh, uh, the video in the description below which tells you a lot about the importance of this. Okay, but let's imagine you did this. Now, what's your score going to be? Do we find an average here? Or perhaps you get a seven because you got two out of the three were in the seven category? No. What's going to happen is you're going to be scored on the lowest number here, okay? So whatever you get, doesn't matter if you get nine and nine and then you get a four, you're going to get a four for grammar. That's how it works. And let me show you the big number four here. So you're going to get a four. So if we go back to our overall horizontal averaging of the scores, this is how it works. You got a seven for topic, a seven for structure, a seven for vocabulary, and you got a four for grammar. Therefore, if we calculate this, you got 25 points divided by four criteria, 6.25. And remember, if it's at the 0.25, we don't round up, we round down. Therefore, you're going to get a six. And like me, when I got my results that day, I was like, what the hell? How did I get 7.5 on writing? And I'm guessing something like this happened to me. I'm guessing that I didn't include enough complex structures. But there are other ways that this can happen to you. For example, you might write slightly off topic. If you write slightly off topic, you're going to be penalized. Or in your writing task one for academic, if you don't include an overview, boom, 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 you're gonna be penalized as well. So uh, just keep all of that in mind. Luckily, and just so I can restore some confidence back in your IELTS teacher here, I did take the IELTS again and again and again, and I eventually got an 8.5 for writing. Yay, it wasn't a nine, but there you go. I quit after that, I retired. Cool, anyway, hopefully that uh, explains some of the scoring that you get. One of the really frustrating things is when you do get that score report back and it just says six or 6.5 or whatever it is, if you didn't get the score, you think, why? But there's nothing to tell you why. There's some generic information about what six means, but it's not personalized to you. So what I wanna to talk to you about now is why you should get some feedback on your writing so you know exactly what it is you're doing wrong. What you're doing right, who cares? That's fine, what are you doing wrong? Okay, so why you should get some feedback from e2language.com. Well, what it is that we do when we mark your writing, what you do is uh, you go onto the computer, you submit your essay or your writing task one through the computer. One of our expert IELTS teachers is gonna be responding to that. They're going to be marking it. These are trained experts, right? They really know their stuff. So what we do is we look at the uh, criteria for topic, for example, and we have the little uh, very high to low uh, scoring system here. And what we'll do is we're going to give you a tick, like very high for this and medium for that and low for that and, and for this one it was high, and blah, 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 blah. And so what you'll be able to identify extremely quickly is that, oh, my position wasn't very clear. This is the thing that I need to work on before test day. More importantly is that not only do we identify the particular issues that you're making in your essay or in your task one, but we actually tell you what to do to improve. So we provide you with uh, videos or parts of the website that you need to visit to focus on the particular issues you have. For example, for articles, if you uh, got low score for articles, then we would give you links across to how you can review the basics and do some uh, work on articles here. Okay, now let me go back because at the start I said I was going to give you six critical tips and I sort of showed you four, but these are the ones that you really need to think about on test day. And if I were to take the IELTS again, which perhaps I will, these are the six things in my mind that I would definitely think about. Okay, so think more deeply about topic, structure, vocabulary, and grammar. 
because really these are the critical hidden ones that people forget. People forget about vocabulary range. That is, if there's a, like a key word in your essay, you should be thinking about synonyms and not repeating the same word again and again. In the vocabulary criterion, you will be penalized if you don't show a wide variety of grammar, uh, not grammar, vocabulary, like synonymous language, synonyms or paraphrases. So when you're writing your essay and you think, hang on, I've used this particular word like six times now, start to think, okay, stop doing that, start to mix up your language a little bit. Uh, sorry, mix up the variety of your words a little bit, but make sure they're still precise because you still are scored on vocabulary precision or how accurate that word is. So if you do choose a synonym, make sure it's a good one. The other thing that people get penalized on is grammatical range. And that's what I just spoke about before, about using a variety of different sentence types. You really need to show off your full uh, gamut, is that even a word? Your full variety or your full breadth of grammatical structures. Okay, so you wanna write some simple sentences, some compound, some compound complex, some complex. Pop a conditional sentence in there. Maybe even put a question sentence in there. Really, and if you're taking the computer-based test, which I highly recommend, you actually get enough time to go in and really change your sentences around. It's far better than the paper-based test, I must say. And of course, and you'll always be thinking about this, you need to make your grammar precise. But these are the two critical ones, the vocab range, that's a star by the way, and grammatical range. And always, always, always make sure that you are on topic. Read that question prompt again and again and again and make sure you've answered all of it. Then make sure, anyway, there's lots of complexity here. I can't give you it all in a single video. Check out the website at e2language.com all of the methods lessons, overview lessons, practice questions, model essays, writing feedback, live classes, it's all there. Cool, there's one more thing I wanna show you. If you are taking the computer-based IELTS test, you should check out our IELTS mock test on e2language.com. It's a fully, uh, what is it? It's a fully computer-delivered mock test, just like the IELTS mock test, obviously far less expensive. And it's a really good little investment if you wanna know what you're doing right and wrong, because in this you will also get feedback on your writing as well as take a live speaking uh, mock test as well. So the, mock, uh, the live speaking mock test happens like this, and there's Alex, um, and it's done on Zoom, which is a program like Skype. And as I've been talking about throughout this video, uh, you get a band score indication, but more importantly, you're going to get that feedback so you can identify what you're doing wrong. Cool, so what did we learn? Well, we learned about the complexity of the IELTS scoring system. We learned that you get an average if you're going horizontally. But if you look at those band thingamajiggies uh, vertically, you get the lowest one there, and then it'll get the average of that. That's how you're scored in IELTS. If you don't know why you're getting low scores, get some feedback. Cool, thanks for watching. My name is Jay, ta-ta.